Hi, I'm Ted with Legacy Brand Leather. This video is in partnership with Tanya Leather and we're gonna be making this leather satchel. Head to the description below to download the free PDF pattern so you can follow along. At the end of this video, stick around because there's details on how you can win this satchel. Anyways, let's get to it. Okay, once you've downloaded the pattern, you're gonna go to File and Print. And once you're there, you're gonna select Poster. It's gonna put it into a poster format and make sure that cut marks are selected. Then hit print. You're going to want to just double check the size of the test block to ensure that it is one inch by one inch. Once you have all your pages printed out, we're going to cut off the excess of the cut marks so that we can line them up together. Once those have all been cut off, you're going to just tape up the pieces. And from there, we're just gonna cut off the excess so we can start cutting this out to the actual pattern size. Now you could have this printed in the full format. I'm doing it this way since it's probably the most common way people are going to be printing this out. And then I'm going to be gluing it to some thicker cardstock poster board. with some 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. If you're gonna be using this, make sure that you're doing this in a well-ventilated area and also wearing a respirator type mask. Once you're done doing that, you're going to be cutting out the rough shape so we can start cutting the final pattern sizes. Be sure to transfer over all the holes on the pattern to the actual pattern itself. Just hammering them out. cutting any of the lines that need to be transferred through to the actual leather itself. Okay, so the leather I'm using here today is a Vaquero Veg Tan Side. It's four to five ounces thick and it's been dry tumbled, so it has more of a rugged bison looking appearance. And the reason for that is the bag is actually going to be in a short film that's um, kind of like a period piece Western. And I wanted it to be a little more rugged to fit into that setting. So let's get to it. Now here's the fun part of putting out all your pieces on the leather to try to get as little scrap as possible. I'm just using a scratch all to trace all those pieces onto the leather. And from there, I'm using some shears to just cut out the rough shapes. Then with a rotary cutter and a straight edge, I'm just cutting down to the right sizes. For those more intricate curves, I'm using a brass knife, but you could use a box cutter or a round knife for this. Once again, I'm just transferring all those holes from the pattern onto the leather. Now this is just a support piece so that uh, it has a little bit more support when you're attaching the top flap. It's gonna be glued right there. Going to be beveling and dyeing all the exposed edges of all the pieces. I 
And here I'm just cutting out the tabs that are going on the back to support the D-rings. Then just use your preferred edge dressing before you burnish the leather. And for the glue up, I'm using some EcoWeld water-based glue adhesive. Letting that become tacky before applying the pieces together. With all my gluing up, I like to hammer them just to make sure that the glue sets a little bit more evenly. And here I'm using a wing divider for some crease on the edges for a more decorative look. I don't have a creaser at the moment, but this will work in a pinch. And for the stitch line on that support piece, it's a quarter of an inch distance. Then I'm just hammering my stitching holes. I'm going to be using a natural waxed linen thread. It's going to end up looking a little bit more accurate to the time period of this bag. Now I'm doing some saddle stitching to stitch up the support piece. Once you're done stitching, cut off the thread ends and burn them down so they don't pull through. and then hammer your stitches so that they lay flat. Now we're going to be setting the back support pieces for the D-ring. I'm just tracing around it before I use my scratcher so that I can apply some eco weld glue so that it adheres to the bag better. I'm gluing both pieces so that it holds together before attaching that copper rivet. Then just using a rivet setter, I'm attaching the pieces, cutting off the excess, then I'm hammering the rivet flat so that it doesn't catch on anything. And then doing the same thing to the other side. And here I'm adding the quarter inch distance stitching line to stitch up those back pieces. and then repeating the process for the other side. Now I'm just cutting out the piece for the front. I'm just cutting a one inch strip so that I can do the buckle pieces for the front. Transferring all the holes onto the buckle pieces. Then a more narrow strip for the keepers for the buckle pieces. Again, all of the exposed pieces are beveled, dyed, and burnished. Once again, I'm using my wing divider to add any decorative sort of crease to the edges. And for those keepers, I'm just hammering those up before I stitch them into the little loops. I'm gluing up the buckle pieces so they can easily be attached to the front of the bag. Now I'm transferring over where the buckle will sit onto the leather. This is where that little loop is going to be sitting on the leather. Then I'm marking the perimeter so I can use my surface rubber and attach some glue. This is just to secure it to the front of the bag so I can start hammering them and sew them on.
And now I'm just marking where the stitches are gonna sit with a 1 8 stitching distance and then one down the middle. And it's just a matter of stitching those up. Now you could use a different method for securing those buckles to the front of the bag. However, I was trying to emulate another bag that I had seen online that was using this technique. Here I'm transferring the holes to the top of the gusset where some line 20 snaps are going to go. This is to keep the bag closed in case you want to protect some of the items inside. Here I'm putting a quarter inch stitching distance on the interior of the gusset before I'm going to clip up the entire thing. After doing this a few times, I found the best method to be clipping up at the top on each side and then clipping towards the center. Then it's time to hammer out all those holes and stitch it up. And now we're just starting the process of folding the bag right side out. This takes a bit of forearm strength. You just gotta keep pressing on the inside of the bag, pushing on those seams a bit so that they don't pucker too much on the outside. And there you have it. This is what the line 20 snaps look like when you snap the bag together. Hmm, don't quite like the look of that buckle in the middle. When I was at the Tandy store buying all the hardware, there was only a few of these buckles left, and unfortunately I thought that the darker buckle would be close enough to the other hardware, but it just doesn't look right, so I had to wait a bit till they got a restock, and I'm going to be replacing that buckle now. Sometimes things like this happen, it looks like it's gonna match, but at the end of the day it doesn't and you want it to look right. So we're gonna cut out the stitches, add the new buckle, sew it back up, and we'll be back in business. Now I'm just tracing out the top flap, giving it a rough cut before I cut it down to the right size. Then I'm going to use my strap cutter to cut the straps out for the top flap. That's fun to say 10 times fast. Now I'm just marking the tape around those straps and cutting that out. These straps are also going to get that decorative crease. Once again, all those edges are going to get the same dye and burnishing treatment. Now I'm transferring all those marks for the cuts where the strap is going to fit through on the top flap. Then carefully using a knife to make those cuts.
Here I'm marking the quarter inch stitching distance with my wing divider. Here I'm just adding another decorative crease over the sections that are going to cover the straps. And then just fit the straps through. I'm going to glue those in place before I hammer on the top flap. Then it's time to glue it up and start assembling the top flap to the main bag. Then just hammer your holes and stitch it up. And there's the main body of the bag. And now it's time to cut the strap for the bag. Using a straight edge and a rotary knife to get a nice clean edge before I use my strap cutter. I'm really going for the longest strip I can get here. The overall strap length is going to be about 40 inches. And here I'm making a loop that's going to go around the buckle. And these straps are going to have the same taper as the other ones do. And for the hole for the buckle on the strap, I'm using the front of the bag buckle piece pattern, starting from where the taper ends. Then I'm hammering that through, and the standard crease, die, and burnishing. Here I'm just stitching together the loop strap keeper. and then setting a copper rivet to hold that in place. Now I'm starting to finish the top of the bag with some sanding, beveling, edge dye, and then burnishing. You could add a handle to the top of the bag. I chose not to since I was going for a different aesthetic for this project. Now I'm finishing off the other end of the strap. And just to ensure that the top flap is more secure, I'm adding some copper rivets. Now while I was at Tandy, I was looking at some of the trigger snaps and I didn't feel like they were going to fit aesthetically with the time period of the bag, so I just opted to do copper rivets to secure this to the bag D-rings. But go with your favorite option here. And that's pretty much it, but let's check out some B-roll. Now you might want to look away here, since the bag is intended for a period piece western style outlaw, the film production crew asked that I weathered the bag since it looked a little too clean for a bag that maybe the outlaw stole and then was on the run with for a while. So I grabbed some sandpaper and some other tools and got to work. 
Mainly I was trying to rough it up and then go over it to kind of dull it a little bit. The overall aesthetic looks really great at the end of the day. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. And in order to be entered into the giveaway for this satchel, head to my Instagram at Legacy Brand Leather. I'll be posting all the details on the giveaway there. If you want to support this channel, head to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Legacy Brand Leather. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up below and please subscribe. This shows me that you want to see more videos and more content like this. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe out there.